something um, about this episode sparked my brother's attention. He really wanted to talk about money, basically. Money. money management, whatever you call it. So, yeah, like what sparked you to talk about money? Um, well, in, in an earlier episode, we talked about uh, like the difference between our generations, like being, yeah. you being a millennial, me being a Gen Z, and like uh, one of the biggest difficulties that I think Gen Zs are facing now is the struggle of finances, yes. how to grow finances in a world that is basically set up to set up against us and because you with guys our are, economy. You guys are the more cradled generation. You guys didn't yeah. really have to worry a lot about money unless you were impoverished or unless you really had a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. So majority of us, majority of you guys, um, feel like you guys live with your parents, a lot of them not paying rent. Um, with me, I had to pay rent. I had to work really hard because I had that goal in mind to have a home. Whoever tells you that you can't bring money to your grave or money can't buy you happiness, they're full of shit. Like, do not... <laughs> <laughs> do not listen to that money can definitely buy you happiness it could buy you more than that it could buy you freedom it could buy you time and it could buy you your mental state money that's, is so important to me it is that's just how the world works and i'm not a vain person i'm i'm not motivated by money i'm motivated by what money gives which is freedom and time and just that relaxed era that you could have um without having to worry about like oh gosh how am i supposed to pay for this dinner how am i supposed to pay for this birthday present what whatever whatever um i just like knowing that if i want something i can get it and i could be independent from it i don't need to rely on no man i don't need to rely on family i was just wired differently money was super important to me and i think a lot of people are realizing that now because they saw they see me as somebody who paid out of pocket through many kinds of colleges that I uh, put myself through. Um, I was at a point where I bought two homes. Um, majority of it was from my own money. I also am very independent. I, I didn't need to borrow mm -hmm. any money. A lot of mm -hmm. people borrow from me. Some, <laughs> some don't even pay me back. Um, <laughs> oh, no. And That's a tea. Yeah, and just, like, being able to pay for cash for things. And I'm not trying to be on a high horse. It's just something that, like, I planned myself to be this way because I really hate being in debt. I really hate owing money. Money is, it's, like, it really brings about a lot of fear and animosity amongst people if you don't have it. And a lot of stress comes from... Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of stress that comes out of relationships is money. And I, and I can speak on you not being a vain person because people might have the false perception that you are a vain person because you say that money can buy you happiness. But yeah. you, you don't go out. You don't. I don't. like. <laughs> I wear hand-me-downs. I wear like the same things over and over again. I'm not a flashy person. It's to the point where if Daniel and I were to get married, I told him, I said, if you were ever, if you ever want to, to propose don't buy me an engagement ring because i don't need it like things that i don't need i don't care for it and it's not because we don't have the money for it is because i like my money to stretch i like it to work hard for me an engagement ring is just another thing that i'm going to be fiddling around with in my finger and heighten my adhd because it's going to be like ah like this this thing on my finger like just little things like that so um a lot of people ask me um how i became this way yeah and how i, I asked you how you became job. this way so it all started with me being in high school i was in grade nine and my friends wanted to give each other birthday uh no christmas presents and i asked our dad i'm like can you can you pay can you give me money so i can pay for bir uh, christmas presents because everybody else is giving yeah. each other christmas presents my and daddy was like no oh, and really? like, oh my god that? and then i freaked out because i'm the one receiving christmas presents and i'm not giving christmas presents and i'm just like it was like the the scariest time of my life it was the most stressful time of my life and it was I'm grade like, nine yeah i'm like <laughs> i have no money so I went to my guidance counselor and I'm like, listen, I need a job because I need to pay for Christmas presents. Like, Christmas <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I did not know this is how it started. There are kids <laughs> going through eating disorders, going through suspension, going through troubled homes. And I'm here going to the guidance counselor and being like, listen, I'm, I have an issue too. 
I need <laughs> you to help me find a job because I I need to pay for Christmas presents for this party for this for Christmas, for Christmas in general. All. So she's like, okay. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So that's okay. So so get back to me. She calls me back the next day and she's like, listen, I found an ad, and this was when like things were on a paper and it's just like hey you want to work it was an ad and the bulletin board and she's like i found something it's right across like just around the corner it's at a hospital near you and um they're paying you a lot of money it's eight dollars and 33 cents and i'm like <laughs> shut the fuck up i'm rich i'm gonna go eight dollars that was minimum wage back in back in 2005 eight dollars and 33 cents you are you are popping <laughs> you are that's good crazy. because back that's then crazy. minimum wage at like a grocery store was probably only six dollars six six fifty oh wow and i'm my ass getting paid 833 <laughs> as a as a 14 year old so you were 14 not 15 I think it, 50 sorry 15, 15. yeah okay 2005 yeah, so she's like, go now because you, you can just, we can help you with a resume and you can go and drop it off. And this was when you can literally just drop off a resume and you can get a call. Now oh, it's, wow. it's way harder for you guys yeah. to find a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I... are more competitive too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we printed out the, the um, what's it called? The resume. A friend came with me because I, I didn't know how to, I was, again, I'm dyslexic. I don't know <laughs> where I was going. So she helped me go there. Um, and it was a hospital. I remember the smell of the hospital. Oh of my when, gosh. Like it was, it's so nostalgic. I went wow. to the kitchen area. It looked ghetto as shit. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> so I'm like, I don't care. I'll be shit. I need a pot. I need, I need these birth, uh, these Christmas presents. So I went into the kitchen. I dropped my resume. I'm like, I'm here to apply for the position. <laughs> and then that's it. I get a call back, like literally when I got home. And she's like, hey, Jen, um, are you good for Friday to do wow. an interview? And I'm like, yes. Same day? It. The same day. I was no home way. and she called me. Wow. Tanya. Wow. Yeah. So then I went. And I remember my resume being so stupid. Like, I like to eat food <laughs> wait, wait that's what it said yeah. no way because it was like what's oh, yeah because you had no experience of anything yeah because that's when resumes were cute like yeah. so it's like where do you go to school <laughs> what experience you had i said i worked at a daycare i went to this school i worked for my mom at these locations and then a little bit about me i'm like i like to eat food <laughs> It literally, I literally said. I, I swear on everything I have. I said I, I'd like to eat food. <laughs> on a resume. Wow. On a back resume. in 2005. Back in 2005. So I went. I was scared shitless. There were so many people. And uh, mind you, I went to an all girls school. All I see were guys. And um, she closed the door to the office. And she's like, "So, like, blah blah blah. Like, what did you, what do you do? This and that." And I just spoke. And it was. I'm usually so tongue tied. But I was so determined and motivated because I really needed <laughs> Christmas. I really needed those Christmas presents. I need this job because Christmas is coming soon. I didn't tell her that, but I'm like, bro, I just 8:33. I'm good. Like I, I'm ready to work. So then that happened, and I've uh, and that's how I got a job. Were you able to pay for the Christmas presents that year? I was able to pay for everybody's Christmas. Wow. Presents. I was able to get some wow. good stuff. Yeah. Wow. At eight dollars. And it was hour. able to buy me things from MAC Cosmetics. It was able to buy me, like, a, a, a shirt, a sweater for friends, um, chocolates. Like, it was able to, I was able to buy a lot mm. of stuff. But back then, it was an inflation. Mm. So, it, you were, your money was able to stretch. Yeah. Uh, for me, working minimum wage now, post, especially post-pandemic, post inflation yeah that's like during inflation it's like, like lunch money yeah it's barely lunch money yeah at this point yeah. like what what i get per hour yeah which is way higher than eight dollars it's actually ten dollars more than that yeah, yeah but like, like imagine almost eighteen dollars now but it, but that's like the cost of living has gone way up but but for, so going from eight dollars to six is it sixteen dollars now uh almost eighteen from eight dollars to eighteen dollars that's ten dollars in the span of 20 years yeah 2005 was 20 years ago almost oh, shoot yeah that's so right. like m like minimum wage didn't go up a hundred percent the no the cost of living in life went up a hundred percent so yeah. it's almost not fair yeah so again yeah. I, w I was at a good time mm -hmm. and my motivation was because of christmas presents your motivation is because you need to eat and live and grow a family and <laughs> exactly buy homes. exactly so, that's what we're that's what i'm 
thinking of like now right yeah. and, and i'm only 23 yeah yeah and and that's how i start actually it's funny how i started getting motivated to get a job is actually through you okay. <laughs> my vote i remember i was literally i was 15 as well yeah and then you were like like we were living back at at home and then and then you were just like you're like pinky you need a job like you need to get you're, you're i said you're you need a job legal you, age you need to go you need to go apply to mcdonald's send yeah, in your resume yeah, yeah yeah did you end up working at mcdonald's no they unlike you i sent in my resume to mcdonald's the closest one to us yeah and, and they never yeah. got back to me <laughs> whereas i yeah. went to a hospital in a kitchen w- with men working there and i'm like please and you're getting paid more than minimum wage yeah. even during that time again it was 650 minimum wage was 650 wow at the time, and i was yeah hours. i wasn't that lucky and then it didn't I, I literally didn't lost motivation to work until the two things i told you to do is get a job and eat healthy exactly <laughs> yeah. those are the two big a things trait. Two big things and yeah. then but i'm so thankful that you pushed me actually yeah. because when i did i didn't get a job unfortunately until i was 18 Mm -hmm. when I when during my first year of uni Mm -hmm. but when I same thing how I how you experienced it like you 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 taught me a lot about what Mm -hmm. it was going to be like and it was true Mm -hmm. like becoming financially independent was so like shaped who I am at this point and like really like motivated me to that it was possible for me to get my goals and stuff Mm -hmm. like that and back then it was also not as bad I I feel like this was pre-pandemic when I got my first job yeah and it was it was so good it was, it was great because you were able I to learned. like just do yeah. you're so independent you yeah. could do anything like i remember you don't have to rely i also don't like asking i hate for asking. money i hate asking so hate much. asking and then you told me not to do that that's why to get a job and when i learned how to do that now it's like i don't i feel like motivation is that. different like somebody it's a difference between somebody that you look up to and feeling motivated mm-hmm to get a job versus me is was like fu- like it was i was in dire need i had to work <laughs> i needed those christmas presents and also like after that my dream like i was from a little kid i always wanted to do better mm. because i saw others struggle i saw our parents struggle mm-hmm. i didn't want to be yeah like that not saying that it was a bad thing not saying i'm ashamed of that it's just i never want to feel Mm-hmm. or have kids that would feel that way like i i had so much sympathy exactly. for them i just never wanted to, to struggle so it was more so fight or flight like i money was something that was a, a form of security to me just like anybody else like maybe friendships or having a partner or having a job having tra- ha- travel in your life that provides you security but for me money was security for mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. i like knowing that i could go to a restaurant and pay for my own dinner and not mm-hmm. have to count pennies exactly. um so so that was that and mm-hmm. um my next motivation was that i always wanted to, to have a house i always mm-hmm. wanted to live in my own home and that was my main motivation and that's how i just wanted to keep saving money and it was always like it was almost um, exciting for me to see how much high, like how high the money could go. It was to the point where I was looking at 50,000 in my bank. Like wow. My first 100,000, it was like amazing. Wow. But it was again, during a time where <laughs> it was doable. Mm-hmm. And it was also a time where I luck was on my side. Again, I was working a student shift. It wasn't even part-time, it was student shift. And I worked from 4.30 to seven o'clock. So I only worked two hours. (laughs) Yes, the pay was high during the time, but I only worked two hours. And um, it was like three or four times a week. And, Mm. you know, our parents weren't great about me having a job, but I was so determined. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not listening to you at this, uh, for this, at this time because i really liked making money and making my own money yeah yeah um and so it was luck because that workplace was um going through a turnover and um, laying people Mm -hmm. off and because i had high seniority as a student Mm -hmm. i was up i was bumped up to part-time so i was saved by like they saved me as a student worker and put me into part-time and i got a huge pay raise wow like more than doubled wow so i was literally 17 18 and getting paid 20 bucks an hour in 2008 2009 20 bucks an hour at 2009 yeah 
minimum wage isn't even yeah up there yet and i was working i was still doing my thing and i i worked a lot and that's where our parents helped me because my mom was motivated for me to like work too because it was Mm. a good pay raise that was a real that is a really good pay raise at 20 but it was all luck i didn't have any credential i didn't it was just me being determined and uh staying at that job again i worked at other jobs i worked for abercrombie and fitch at one point oh yeah i remember that oh i forgot about that wow but like that job just gave me more money so i stayed there and it was motivating for me because i just kept seeing my bank account going higher and higher and higher and that was more it was closer to my goals when you don't have a specific goal for you Mm -hmm. there's a difference between you looking up to somebody and being like i want to be that person and i want to have money too but like you need a goal that's edging you on to want to just make that money Mm -hmm. and so for me my goal was having a home and it made me change my lifestyle almost it was to the point where i didn't even want to use a bus token because that meant i had to waste another bus token going home (laughs) so like i would come home from i would uh finish high school and i would walk my ass 30 minutes to go to 30 minutes well well, it's walking distance and um it was close to my school driving wise or going to the bus Mm -hmm. but like walking wise it was like maybe 25 minutes 20 25 minutes that's the real asian experience yeah is and being because that cheap and because <laughs> being i was frugal. working i was working at 4 30 i had enough time to walk so our school finished at 4 3 15 and i would work 4 30 so i would walk that amount of time and like i did not want to take the bus because that means i had to pay for another way back home mm. when i finished my shift so mm. it's little ta- little things like that where that's why i made money because of my lifestyle Whereas you guys, you Uber, like not saying you, but I noticed the younger generation, they want to Uber, they want to buy food, they want to have their expensive Starbucks, their coffee, they want to go out. I was not like that. Hence why, like in the beginning, I say, listen, I am not a vain person. I'm just saying I know the power of money and I know the power of struggling too and how that could could, um, make you become something else that you don't want to be living in the poverty line and not making like counting pennies and stuff like that i did not want to be at that point Mm -hmm. so i had to really while it was still doable i had to really um uh switch up my lifestyle and not Mm. be so uh luxurious with my stuff but of course i made friends i had friends in high school and we did a lot of shopping and it was and i was still okay with that because i could afford it you could afford it yeah but i yeah. still had that balance of like balance, not yeah. wanting to blow everything mm-hmm, off out mm-hmm. and i also felt like i was generous to our parents like i did give some some money to them oh, okay yeah, right yeah yeah so i i wanted to do this episode and i'm passionate about this episode too because you know i have similar goals similar motivations for myself like i want to have i want to move out as well mm-hmm. and have my own place mm-hmm. And yeah, we had a conversation about this recently. It was a heartbreaking conversation because it was like I was stealing your dreams away and 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 being all boomer about it. Because because having a home nowadays is not. It's doable, especially in Toronto. It's doable if you're more open to moving away from Toronto. Yeah, Toronto is really hot. Like you're looking at a nasty ass home for a one point one million dollars, and you would have to renovate it yourself. You're in a weird area. A really good, ha- a really beautiful home in the city would cost you around like two million, and there's no way mm-hmm. you can have like two hundred thousand down in mm-hmm. your in your bank account as a as a down payment. Exactly, especially so. with even I work two jobs now. I work a full time that pays me a full time salary and a part time. I'm still at my part time mm-hmm. job, mm-hmm. Uh, where it is minimum. It's a, a, min- a, a slightly above minimum wage because I I'm a supervisor there, but mm-hmm. still it's nowhere near enough. And I'm living yeah. at home yeah. and I'm saving all this money. I also don't like splurge on Starbucks or anything like that, but it's still very expensive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what? So instead of owning a home, like how should I like reshape like my financial goals yeah, in order so to move is, out? Yeah. So should I just out. like rent? I don't think so. I feel no? like it depends. I had to move out because I didn't like my home life. Again, Mm -hmm. we talked about my depression room. I was super (laughs) depressed. I had to Mm -hmm. move out. And you also had a kid. Yeah. Yeah. And I also lived away from my boyfriend, um, who's Adriana's dad. Um, So I had to move out for many reasons. I feel like you don't need to rock the boat. I don't think you need to to fix anything that isn't broken. And I think living at home is something that you're going to have to it took me eight years to leave how to leave the house. Okay. So okay. if you're in a situation where 
you don't you're not living in fear or living no, in toxicity no. i think living at home is fine if they're leaving you alone they, they are yeah 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 so it, it is good it for really me. depends if your living condition living is really bad yeah exactly so like but eventually because I'm, I'm a independent person especially growing up now mm-hmm. like i want to be independent so it's is my goal now to just be like if i can't since i can live at home to just live at home and then like yeah. save up to buy yeah. something maybe not a house but maybe like something well we talked about like, like i i i curated uh his um his finances for him in a way where he he'll be okay by the, the time he's retired mm-hmm. um and that was to make sure that he puts money in investments and he puts um money in certain pockets where in, mm-hmm. where you just let the savings sit and it mm-hmm. will grow interest. And that's mm-hmm. a whole nother um, thing. You, you, you got to be strategic with your money and you have to be very mm-hmm. um, attentive to your lifestyle. Uh, mm-hmm. The reason why people don't save and the reason why people are so away, f- so apart from their goals is because of their actions, uh, because they move for mm-hmm. they move um, farther from their goals. So that's just like doing impulse shopping, feeling the need to validate themselves by getting the new gadgets, getting the new sweaters, getting yeah. the new everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and that's what's hard. Mm-hmm. And not being practical with your money. Like I needed a new phone and I paid in cash. I paid for mine and Daniel's wow. phone in cash because we just need a new phone. His battery was bad and I needed more space to do this beautiful podcast mm-hmm. with you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And that's why I was able to afford it. But mm-hmm. it's about the lifestyle. It's not about the actual thing. Like people, people can look at me and be like, wow, you're super rich. You you just bought two phones. And it's like, no, you should see my lifestyle before this. Like <laughs> I don't wear makeup. I don't buy makeup. Mm-hmm. I bought every, a lot of my clothes are secondhand. And we're just very intentional with what we do every day. Like we're not going to, um, we eat loaf leftovers. The girls have had me downs as well. Like we, mm-hmm. we do very simple things. So which is why we are closer to our goals by needing things that we could buy right away. Mm-hmm. Um, so to go to your, um, so for you, like what is your driving motivation now that we kind of solidified that like right now we can't buy a home in. in Toronto like what is your driving force well I think my driving force right now is focusing on my career so that I can so that I can and hopefully when I do get my career going for what I want to do and you know just exploring other job options within Mm -hmm. my field Mm -hmm. I would be able to get more money Mm -hmm. because if you make it big in my particular industry I graduated from media studies Mm -hmm. so you make it big in media or television anything like Mm -hmm. that you can make good amount of money Mm -hmm. and then I want to use that money towards um, eventually moving out because I I do want to like be independent Mm -hmm. and I'm just very like um, just trying to like weigh out my options on how like where I should live and like what kind of place I want to live in Mm -hmm. like condo like for me I invested in a home Hmm. but for you it doesn't have to be a home there's also things like investing in yourself Mm -hmm you know going to programs buying courses um um, exactly i have been doing that too yeah Yeah. so like it's still an investment Mm -hmm. as long as your money is housed in a way Mm -hmm. where it's working hard for Mm -hmm. you in the background of that do you Um, think it's okay for me to rent when i do move eventually i think it's i think it's totally okay to rent if it means that it's good it's moving closer to your goals like what's the like are you going to like okay there's a difference between moving to the city like downtown toronto if your side hustle is in downtown toronto like let's say um it's saving you money because you don't have have the bus you don't have to commute um you have a studio there that you're working with a bunch of friends that are that's that's moving you forward to a side hustle like it, it depends um why you would need to move out is it better okay. for your mental state but at the same time like our parents are leaving you alone it's okay yeah yeah like, yeah, yeah you're gonna have to be bombarded by a rent bill that's gonna be two thousand dollars I know, I know. so you'd rather spend three dollars going to your workplace and spending that time then and maybe reading a pot reading a book listening yeah, yeah, to a podcast yeah, to, yeah. to enhance your growth yeah then forking over two thousand dollars Forking over two thousand so, dollars exactly yeah exactly. so it's it's really that like mm-hmm. you have to reverse engineer no i'm not yeah don't worry i'm not gonna move out don't yeah. worry like i'm not gonna move out anytime soon it's just more of like the only thing that is making me want to is independence and like 
um my room is really small <laughs> my mental yeah. health it's just like it's very like which isn't enough to make me move out but it's just like I, I want you I want my it. own space and like I want and they do leave me alone but I do want my own full space and I just I'm that type of person but what's I'm a lot space? more vain than her yeah but what's full <laughs> space to you like you want a whole table to yourself in the living room like what's wrong I want to be I really want to be independent like I want to live I don't like I, I live with my parents in Scarborough I don't like Scarborough I'd rather live closer so it's all to vain the, reasons yeah, yeah you are very vain yeah closer yeah. to the city i want to like have my own place my own stuff like mm -hmm. i don't want to real i don't like even though i am living rent free and it's great like i don't like relying on people and i want to like be yeah independent. so you have to be really intentional mm -hmm. with how you could do that you could definitely rent but is mm -hmm. your expenses going to be higher than your income income that's if the you have thing. a really yeah. high income definitely rent it's just like Guya, like he has a yes. very high income and yeah. he is able to rent because it's nowhere near as high of an expense for him yeah that's so, that's the place i want to get to yeah i think so yeah, yeah so career is definitely something like networking caring for yourself and your your self-care building that confidence i mm -hmm. think that's just going to make you closer to your goals mm -hmm. um not feeling anxious about projects or initiatives that you want to take i think that's that's way beyond money mm -hmm. and that's okay. yeah like money is not everything it's not everything money is not everything i'm not saying that like the most important thing is money more than your family or your or your your well-being and yourself mm -hmm. but it is super important to have mm -hmm. and to make sure that you you have in the back burner of it because mm. if you ever want to leave something if you ever need something if you need to get something fixed like a filling or um needing to buy buy something to help your health like you don't have to say like i can't afford it that's my biggest fear in life mm. and i never want my kids to go through that which is why i make sure that young people like you and them know how to manage their money properly mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you're gonna say there's saving money is one thing but like saving it properly is another yeah like you're not gonna save it in a checkings account that makes nothing like mm -hmm. of course you have to find a tax open up a tax sheltered um account that houses a lot of your savings and that gives you access to the stock market and mm -hmm. you have to look that up and make sure that um you can find a bank that open that helps you open a tf uh, a tfsa or rsp we're in canada so um that opens up a tax sheltered account so that you can have access to the stock market and that can just compound as you grow so that when you're retired it'll be worth something later on like it'll be more so like you just chip her away with stocks and then it's going to grow and manifest into your first million or your first hundred thousand stuff like that so mm -hmm. the earlier the better um and but before that you need to make your first thousand being um an emergency um an emergency account so mm -hmm. in case you want to buy christmas presents in case you want to go on vacation yeah, yeah, yeah. if you chip your tooth and you got to fix it and you don't have coverage that's your emergency fund okay um obviously not vacation like let's say uh something happened god forbid and you need to go somewhere that's gonna call, give you the opportunity to take off work and uh, make you go and help you um, mm -hmm. go there mm -hmm. so that's more emergency obviously like a travel to like mexico is not emergency but your first thousand should be your emergency fund first and that's mm -hmm. going to be in a high interest savings account that while it's parked there every month it's creating income um mm -hmm. which you have mm -hmm. and you just keep adding to your emergency fund and then after you feel good about your emergency fund that's emergency fund being your six months worth of expenses in mm -hmm. case god forbid something happens and you can't work for six months mm -hmm. or um you have to be away for six months yeah uh, to your job or whatever um after you bulked up your your savings mm -hmm. account then you go over to your tax sheltered account and you play with the stock market for there uh over there and i'm not talking about day stocks i'm not talking about like single stocks i'm talking about a really good etf that houses a lot of companies that like when, a basket of stocks yeah yeah so that when you are 60 it has grown to mm -hmm. become a lot once you sell it and then you don't have to work past 65. don't rely on the government don't rely on anything else like you need to do this at a at while you're still well 
Yeah. 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 I, 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 it breaks my heart seeing like 70 year olds still working because they have to. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's yeah. the reality. It sucks. Life. And depending on yeah. their kids or depending on people to, mm -hmm. to help them, it's really mm -hmm. hard. I never want to get to that point. Mm -hmm. So. And I'm thankful that you taught me about it because I, yeah. I know you keep, you keep telling me like, oh, if I were your age oh, and gosh, I did that. Was, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Would I would. Be, yeah. I did save, but like I, I bought properties, so I didn't mm -hmm. really put a lot in the stock market, but now I am, and I do have to put in more money. Whereas mm. with you, it's just a, like a few, like maybe a hundred and whatnot. But like with so me, you think it's like a lot. Uh, for me, a hundred per month into well, it's whatever you could do. It's whatever you could do as long as you're. Well, investing. I feel, I feel, I feel after this conversation, I feel like I'm better yeah. off than I thought. Yeah, you are better <laughs> off because you know better. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I, I just want to preface that like you don't have to not not go to starbucks you don't have to be so cheap like i did i just mm -hmm. i was at a fi fight or flight i was extremely depressed and i had to do what i got to do in a fight or flight response kind of way um which is why i i changed my lifestyle up to make my goals come faster to me whereas right now like we're good we are we have goals that we have in place but at the same time, we're not depriving ourselves with the occasional restaurant outing or mm -hmm. the occasional event. Like, you know, we, we travel, we try to travel once, um, once yeah, a year. Yeah, started traveling, which is good. Yeah. yeah. So, like, don't think that you shouldn't buy a coffee, that mm -hmm. you shouldn't buy a sweater. Mm -hmm. It's whatever the goals are, you have to always think with the purchase. Is this going to make me come closer to my goals or farther to my goals? Is this, is this sweater mm -hmm. going to define me or do I have something like it already in my closet so okay. it's stuff like that you can still buy it but yeah, if, exactly. it's, if it means it's getting closer to your goals then go for it okay gives so, me a lot of perspective on yeah things. yeah exactly so your biggest goal in terms of really saving and securing your future is investing in investing and in housing yeah. your money a prop um housing your money strategically and um good <laughs> and well mm, okay. yeah and not just putting it in a savings account and thinking that mm -hmm. because when you put it in a regular checkings account or a savings account, your two thousand dollars will be two thousand dollars in three years. Oh, wow. If you put it into the stock market, it's going to be maybe six thousand dollars, like depending on oh, cool. the market and yeah. depending on uh, yeah. the the rates now and how the market's doing. Yeah. So it's great. Like you like you always think about your money working the hardest for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. That was yeah. a great, great advice. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of thank course, you. like read books. Rich Dad Poor Dad is a great uh, uh, first book that you could read, um, and do your research on what stocks to pick and um, what the difference between knowing what the difference between a mutual fund and the stock market is. Like, there's many things that go to making educated decisions and making sure that it's the proper ones. Um, so yeah, so it's a lot, it's long conversations. You need a mentor, you need to read books for that. And it's not so much I could do in a podcast episode, but that's the starting point is making sure you just feel, making sure that money is a priority to where it's not about the money, but more so what the money gives to you, mm -hmm. which is freedom and time, mm -hmm. right? So if I need a day off, I could afford a day off. So mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of people that can't afford a day off and they have to work because they exactly, can't Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I know. And that breaks like my that heart. Too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. All so right. good. Thank you. Yes. Yay. Yay. Okay, so that's so that is um episode three. And I hope you are tuning in and I hope that it becomes something that people enjoy listening to. We've covered very random topics, but of course we're gonna be back with other topics and I hope you really enjoy it. Yeah. Till next time.